To start the design, you need to download and install the QBlade software. When you do that, you can run that directly from a zip file directory on your desktop. And I'm going to start this design as if I had never designed anything before. So I'm going to lead you through the process of designing a blade from scratch. Right now, I already have a design file which includes some previous blade designs, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to start a new project from scratch. So the first thing that you do when you start a new project is you go to this airfoil design tab. You need to start by importing some airfoils. And there is already one in place. This is the spline foil that is sort of a default that you can move around and sort of modify yourself. Um, I'm not going to use that one, so I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to import a NACA 0013 airfoil, which is a symmetric airfoil. And the way that you do that is you go to foil and you say NACA foils. And the number of the one that I want to use is 0013. And the number of panels is 100. I'm going to leave that. You'll notice that with this airfoil, the end of it is open. That is OK for working in this software. But when you go to solid modeling software, having an open end of your airfoil is a bad thing. To close off the trailing edge, I'm going to start with my 0013 airfoil and I'm going to right click here and I'm going to set the trailing edge gap and I'm going to set this value to zero and then I'm going to have it start doing the blend about 10% from the trailing edge. So starting around this area is where it's going to start tapering it to close off the end. I'm going to say OK, and then it asks me for a new name. So I'm going to call this, um, let's call it TE10 for trailing edge starting at 10% and say OK. And now if we zoom in on here, we see both the original airfoil, which is the red one, and we see the new one, which is the green one. Now that we have our airfoils designed, we need to save the file so that we can always go back if we do something wrong in the future. So I'm going to hit save. We're going to call this one Demo Blade. The next step in the process is we need to generate a polar plot for this airfoil right around the plus 20 to negative 20 angle settings. So the way that we do that is we hit new polar and we can just accept these default values. And when you do that and you hit analyze, it generates polar plots. What you see is that the coefficient of lift plot is symmetric whether you have a positive angle of attack or a negative angle of attack. And that will be the case for a symmetric airfoil. Same thing with the coefficient of drag. Uh, it looks the same whether the angle of attack is positive or if it's negative. And same thing for the ratio of the two, lift and drag. These things should all be symmetric. Now that we have these plots calculated between negative 20 and positive 20 degrees angle of attack, we now need to extrapolate these through a full 360 degree rotation. Before we go there though, I'm going to hit save to save this. Okay, now we'll go to the 360 degree tab and we're going to extrapolate using the polar that we just calculated. That's what this pull down tab has. So if I say extrapolate, so now we're looking at the calculated data between negative 20 and positive 20. And this is the software's first guess at what these values would look like if you took the blade and you rotated it all the way in 360 degrees. Now this is a little off because when you turn an airfoil flat into the wind, 
it looks like a flat plate. And the co coefficient of drag for a flat plate is about 1.3 or so. So this value here should be in the neighborhood of about 1.3. Um, if I take this CD90 value and I kind of scroll up and scroll down, yeah, okay, it looks like it was about right. So let's just say that that was a CD of about 1.3. Now I need to adjust these four sliders and this slope to make smooth transitions between the extrapolated curves and the calculated curves and there is no way that i know of to do this methodically other than to just start trying to tweak them um, these first two the a and b plus affect the curve on the right hand side the ones that are a minus and b minus affect the curve on this side and the slope for some reason it it seems to affect the curve on the left hand side more than the right hand side and i don't know exactly why if you kind of scroll, you can you can kind of smooth this out. Um, let's see if we keep on going. Yeah, so that's not too bad. Actually, that's really not bad right there. So what you're what you're going for is smooth transitions and uh, symmetry on both sides. So really, that's not bad with the default A and B values and the and the slope the way that I've got it. This looks really good. Um, so now that we have that, I'm gonna hit save here. And when I hit save, it gives us a 360 polar right here. Now let's go back to the airfoils and do the same thing for the trailing edge one. And because we, you need to start this process with um, the calculated polar, you've gotta go back to this tab we go to our modified blade, we say new polar, and you accept the defaults and analyze, and it's going to calculate values for that closed off trailing edge. And it's very close to the open trailing edge, but you can see there are tiny, tiny differences between them. Um, but we're going to stick with this. We're going to come over to our 360 and we're going to change the airfoil to the trailing edge one we modified. We're going to extrapolate and now we need to do our tweaking to smooth this out. Um, let's start by raising the slope and that seems Okay, so that connects this backside. This there's a little jaggy here, so let's okay. No, that didn't do it. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, what happens if I change B? And what I'm doing is I'm clicking my scroll wheel one click, one way or the other, and it looks to me like whichever way I go, things get worse. So that tells me that this is about in the right spot, and. The CD looks about right also, looks about you know 1.3 or so. Um, so now we're going to save that polar. Now that we have those preliminary steps out of the way, we can move to working on a blade design.